Stand. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my fingers in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Jesus.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be seated. Well, I'm very happy to be with you this morning. You may remember that this service was originally scheduled for last fall. Just before the assigned date, however, COVID-19 flared up and Montgomery County and many others in the state entered the purple zone. We just heard in Franklin County that we are on the verge of entering that again, so um, I uh, am glad to be able to be with you here today, and if that happens again, we at least will have had the confirmation. <clears throat> I'm also glad to be with you because it's been several years, and as I'm about to finally wind down for in retirement, uh, hopefully this time for, for permanent, I keep trying it and having to come out for a while. Um, being able to be at St. George's is one of my last visitations is, is, uh, uh, means a lot to me. I've always had great visits here and remember the churches, the churches and the people here with great affection. This gospel lesson that um, William read for us this morning is the famous story of Dutton Thomas. This is a lesson we've heard no, no doubt many times before, one that's very familiar. But you know, it's not a bad text for confirmation. The phrase Doubting Thomas has become synonymous with just about anyone who has a hard time believing. But if we look at the character that it's named after, Thomas, we might be surprised. Thomas was one of the 12 disciples. This very fact indicates that he was a man of great faith, not doubt. After all, these men left their home, their family, their work, and stayed with Jesus through thick and thin for three full years. In fact, Scripture tells us that they themselves were often subject to the same kind of hostility that Jesus faced. And yet they hung in there. Had Thomas been a man of lasting doubt, it's unlikely that he would have endured to the extent that he did. I wonder how many of us would be able to, would be willing to just walk away from all that we knew, family, friends, etc., and follow a relative unknown around the country for that long a time. Now, although we know Thomas best because of this incident that we heard read in the gospel today, if we look at the gospel earlier on, we see quite a different picture. For instance, in the 11th chapter, as Jesus was about to go back into the somewhat hostile Judea, knowing that people were waiting to put him to death there, Thomas, in a bold statement of faith, not doubt, said, let us go with you that we too may die. Being willing to die for someone indicates tremendous faith, not doubt. As I said earlier, I doubt that there are very few of us that would be willing to, truly willing to die if we, we had to just out of loyalty to someone we just met. If we have any real doubts about, about a person's character, we're not going to make that kind of sacrifice. But Thomas was willing, showing a true act of faith. And so rather than being characterized as doubtful, I think a more accurate description of Thomas would be he was realistic. Also in this chapter, this uh, gospel, in the 14th chapter, Thomas asked, he, Thomas was asked a very intelligent question by Thomas. I mean, Jesus, Jesus was asked uh, by Thomas a very relevant question. He said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Now, this isn't a question steeped in doubt. This is a question raised by someone who was considering going with him because he had such faith in him. And you know, if Thomas had not asked that question, we would have been missing a piece of scripture that is so important in our own faith journey that we would be much poorer without it. Because Thomas answered to him, I am the way and the truth and the light. And that's how we give our lives, following Jesus, for he is the way and the truth and the light for us all. 
And finally, even in this statement that was in the gospel for today, if we really look at it, we see a person that is not so much a man of doubt, lacking any spiritual depth, but rather just a human being of intelligence and rationality that suddenly was confronted with something that was beyond the scope of anybody's imagination. He was dead, and yet here now he's alive. So Thomas scratched his head and said, Lord, I need to see the nail in his, the nails in, in his hands. And I need to put my finger where those nails were and put my hand in his side. If I can't, then I'll not believe. Remember what an utterly, utterly fantastic claim we have here regarding Jesus. A man who is dead is alive. This seems to put to put to go past the limits of even the most strong faith that we can imagine. For even someone so staunch as the disciples must bless those of us who have come afterward. And so if one as down to earth and as, and as questioning and as intelligent as Thomas is convinced, then maybe we too can believe. And so Thomas checks it out. Checks it out for himself and for all of us who come afterwards. He wanted to make sure that Jesus had risen from the dead. And because he did, then we too know. Jesus gave him the evidence he was asking for. His doubts were erased. He returned to faith. And that return will carry with it the ability for us to move from doubt to faith as well. But you know, even so, there, there are those among us, and perhaps we can count ourselves in that, who always want to test God for ourselves. How many times have you heard someone say, or maybe said for yourself, Lord, if you'll just do this, then I will do such and so. The problem is that the Lord does it and we're stuck. We have to do what we said. Could be anything. Well, you know, if you have unswerving faith, you don't have to do that. But we're human beings and we're rational beings and, and so we need someone to guide the way. And for us, that person is Thomas. Faith is a very tough concept for our 21st century rational minds. And the Easter event stretches us beyond all limits. Now, for those who do have unswerving faith, Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Thomas, even with all his faith, was not among those blessed. He had to see to believe. Like him, many of us today, who have experienced or been touched by or felt the presence of the Lord in our life, still harbor lingering doubts. And so we look to Thomas. His faith may have wa wavered at, for a moment, causing him to say, uh, and then it returned to him, causing him to say, my Lord and my God, it is you I believe. That act shared in scripture today is an example and, and an inspiration for us to do likewise. Now for those of you who are being confirmed or, or received on this day, this is not a bad scripture to hear. You, in a moment, will be making a statement of your own faith, your own promise to follow Jesus. And I commend you for that. However, being confirmed doesn't mean that all your doubts will disappear, that you'll never again have any questions about life. Doubt will still enter your mind. That's the way it is with us human beings. But I believe by this very exercise of doubting, challenging, respectively debate, debating, you can strengthen your own faith. That, and uh, we don't look at confirmation as being a graduation from a series of classes or, or a, a right that, that means that you're something one day and something else the next. Confirmation is simply you're sa willing to stand up and say, I'm going to continue on this journey. And when I have doubts, I'm going to wrestle with that and hopefully return to a place of faith. No, to, no doubt, in your life and in all our lives, doubt will again creep, creep in. But you know, if, if your faith is based on something somebody simply told you, all right, all of you who are being confirmed, 
you believe this, and, and then you can be confirmed. That's fine. But you just do it because I told you to. The trouble is, when things come along that test that faith, well, then it's easy just to walk away because that, you were simply doing what someone else told you. In the Episcopal Church, we don't believe in that. We say that we are inviting you on a journey in which you will wrestle with, with matters of faith for the rest of your life. But this church is here to wrestle with you, to hold you up, to keep you. The Episcopal Church, since its very inception, has been called the thinking person's church. When people are openly able to share their doubts, their disagreements, their struggles, and their diversity in an atmosphere of respect and acceptance, then they can easily they can earnestly move toward seeking the truth. That exercise leads to a strengthening of our faith and a strong commitment not only to follow Jesus, but to pattern our lives after him and to invite others we meet to do the same. And so, even though doubt is a perfectly normal thing, if perchance you find yourself in a place where it's getting you down, perhaps you lose a loved one or, or something else just makes you say, God, how could this happen? And you shake your head. We, we, we all have those moments and you will. Think of Thomas. Think of Thomas who was a man of strong faith and yet still doubted. And then, like him, moved from that moment of doubt back into a moment of faith. And above, and above all else, remember that when we believe in and follow the risen Lord, great things will happen. After all, there were many who said the crucifixion was the end. Jesus didn't really rise from the dead, but he's proved that that was wrong. And now, 21 centuries later, he, his body, the, the body of the church is still alive, for Jesus has risen, and he still lives today in the prestiges of you and me and all the rest of us. And so, to those of you being confirmed and to all others who are here, bless you on your journey of faith. And most important, as you go, go with God. Amen. I would like to invite all of our confirmands, those for reaffirmation and reception, to stand. The rest of the congregation may remain seated for this portion of the service, including the examination, the covenant, and the prayers. Bishop, I present these persons for confirmation, this person to be received into this communion, and this person who desires to reaffirm her baptismal vows.
We will. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord of life, open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord of life, fill them with your holy, life-giving spirit. Lord of life, keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord of life, Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord of life, send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord of life, bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord of life, Amelia. Amen.
can it? Sue. This is for reaffirmation. Lisa. Joe? Alex. Thank you. 
And also with you. Please be seated. Well, good morning. It is just a joy and privilege to be gathered with you today. I would like to extend a special welcome again to uh, Bishop Price for being here and also a welcome to Marion, who is with us this morning as well. We are thrilled to have you back at St. George's. Uh, some of you may recall, I think the last time Bishop Price was here was for a, a renewal of ordination vows uh, that we did back in 2016. Uh, Dave Cottrell, who is, a, uh, is one of our affiliate priests, was celebrating his 50th anniversary of his ordination. Uh, I was celebrating, I believe, my 10th, and Cal was celebrating his 5th. So we kind of all threw it together, and we had a grand time. But it's great to welcome uh, Bishop Price and Marion back to St. George's. We're so glad to have you here. Just a few things to bring to your attention before we continue with our service. Firstly, uh, please note that all of our education uh, will start to resume moving forward. So my rector's Bible study will resume today. Uh, our youth Bible study will start next week. Um, and it, it, it's all right, I'm sorry, it starts today. It starts today. Thank you, Cal. Uh, and so please also don't forget that in two weeks' time on the 25th, we'll have our visiting guest scholar here, Dr. Amy Peeler, who will present a capstone lecture on our semester-long series on the letter to the Hebrews that we've been reading through for these last few months. Also, after the service, if you would like to take home with you any of the lilies or tulips uh, that are available here, uh, please uh, do so following the service. Try to spread yourselves out. But uh, we are inviting members of the church, if confirmants who, anybody, uh, if you'd like to take some, some flowers, uh, an arrangement or two or seven, uh, please uh, feel free to take those uh, home after the service uh, and enjoy them for a few more weeks. Also, our forward movement devotionals for the May through July quarter are now available. They're in the tub out on the bench on the front patio. If you'd like to grab one of those on your way out, you're welcome to do so. Also, don't forget, next Sunday, April 18th, is our monthly food drive to benefit the pantry at St. Vincent de Paul. So if you have non-perishable food items that you would like to see go to that food pantry, you can drop them off at the front porch anytime between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. next Sunday on the 18th. For everything else that's going on at St. George's, I do encourage you uh, to sign up for our messenger update email. You can sign up for that on our website, stgeorgesdayton.org. Just scroll to the bottom of the homepage. You'll see the link there. There's also more information on your bulletin, our weekly messenger, and I encourage you to take a moment to look at that. Walk in love now as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks praise. It is right to good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rise into life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and true Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts, sanctified and by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you with unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah! Blessed are those who are called to the wedding feast of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let's go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs>